Hi, uh, this is Ray Whitney at Whitney Automotive. I'm uh, making a short YouTube video for all the people out there in Northern Virginia who um, have had their car tested for emissions to renew their registration and they have a problem uh, having, their, having their car pass, it failed, or they have, uh, are getting told that they are not ready for testing, they've been rejected for testing. Um, first off, let me go ahead by saying that, or uh, talking about the test a little bit, it's a uh, the emissions test for, for Northern Virginia only really is from Stafford North and parts of Fredericksburg. It's not required for re vehicle registration in Spotsylvania and South. Now it may be in the future but right now it's not. Um, and it's 25 years rolling which means uh, right now in 2014 um, we're looking at 1989 and newer model years are required every two years to have an emissions test. Now your state safety inspection that goes in your windshield is every year. Uh, the emissions test for your vehicle registration is every two years and that's the sticker that goes on your license plate. Alright, now if you've been failed because you're not ready or you've been failed because you have a check engine light on and they want to give you a code and they're going to charge you to diagnose it, listen through the video and I'll make some sense of it for you as to what path you have to take or why your vehicle might not be ready. Um, years ago, uh, all cars, whether they had um, check engine lights or not, uh, we're subject to a dyno test, meaning we'd put it on a dyno, if it was two-wheel drive, we would drive the car on the dyno, stick a probe in the tailpipe and test the actual gases coming out. Now there are occasions when we still have to do that to a vehicle, um, but for the most part any car built 1996 and newer uh, is subject only to an electronic test and visual test. Um, now, in 1996, the, national, uh, the federal government put out a statement or uh, a requirement for all manufacturers to put um, OBD2 connectors in their car, uh, which is that connector that goes underneath your dash that allows uh, the technician or inspector to plug a computer into your car and read diagnostic trouble codes out of it and see how the car is running, essentially. Um, prior to 1996, some cars had it, but it wasn't required. Um, and some check engine lights in cars were really nothing more than maintenance reminders. But now check engine light, service engine suit light, anything along that line uh, says there's something wrong with the emissions output of your car, the emissions components. That's what check engine light is. There are other lights, but the check engine light is emission related failure. Okay, now um, the process that we go through for a test is you're going to get in the car and if you failed this, you may be thinking, oh, I can outsmart the inspector or this test process. Well, the first step you do, or one of the first steps you do, is you get in the car and you turn the key to the on position. Um, if the check engine light, fit, now, again, this is 1996 newer. If the check engine light comes on with the key just in the on position and then goes off, that's good. All right, You have to have a bulb that works. So you can't just take the bulb out of the car and say, oh, my check engine light's not on. Now my car's going to pass because that just means the light didn't light up. You still have a code stored on the computer saying that your car has an emissions related failure. Now after you get the light that comes on or off or doesn't, and your car could fail the test right there, um, the car will communicate with the uh, inspection station uh, to pull codes out of it. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. If you have a code on your car, odds are you're going to fail. There's few exceptions for codes that do pass. Um, but for the most part you're going to fail if you have a check engine light on. Now, when you have a check engine light on, that means there's something wrong and you need to fix it. All right. Uh, once you get the check engine light fixed, the car has to do something called going through its monitors. That's go through a drive cycle or drive mode. Um, this is just a, a generic sear scan tool, but as I hold it up to the monitor here, you can see all the little circles on the top. One was blinking. Okay, the one that's blinking says cat. Now, if I had this plugged, the less car I had this plugged into, all the monitors, these, these seven other monitors, were set. The last one is catalyst. It's not set. Now, what do I mean by set? Well, you have to drive your car through a drive mode to get these things to set. The car has built in self-checks and self-tests that allow it to make sense of whether it's working properly or not. Now, in theory, you could drive a car through an entire life cycle of the car without going through a drive mode. 
um, there are certain parameters the car has to be under in order for it to set. So here I have an example of a drive mode. Now, as you can see here, this is an um, EGR system repair verification drive mode. That means your car is verifying that its EGR system is working properly. Now, as you can see here, there's a idle period time then you have to drive between 49 and 57 miles an hour for a minute and this is all after you've completed a prior drive mode a warm-up drive mode so in theory you could drive the car an entire lifetime without getting it through an emissions test um, sometimes if you're rejected some inspection stations will tell you go out drive the car for a week put a hundred miles on it at least, take it on the highway and in the city and you'll get through an emissions test. Well, I've seen it plenty of times when it doesn't. You have to actually go through a drive mode to get it done. Now, some places may charge you to do a drive mode, some places won't even offer it and some cars, frankly, don't want to go through a drive mode. Your car is really smart. Uh, I've seen things keep cars from going through drive modes because they don't want to fail. I've seen catalyst converters right there along the edge of passing and failing not set a monitor because they keep on continuing to let the car have second and third chances through the drive modes to try to pass before it says oh I have a really bad cat same with oxygen sensors if they're not reading properly at times they may not let it go through um, so the bottom line is you can drive it 100 miles I'll tell you right now one of the easiest ways to get one to sit is to sit there and let it warm up let it idle it warm up all right. Now this is after you've repaired your check engine light, whatever code was on your car, anything like that. You let your car warm up fully. Uh, drive it a good five miles and stop and go traffic, and then get to the highway. When you're at the highway, you want to stay above 55 miles an hour, slight partial throttle with a steady foot for several minutes at a time. You don't want to exceed 70 miles an hour generally. You don't want to drop below 55. You don't want wide open throttle, and you don't want closed throttle. It's very hard to do, um, but if you can do it, a lot of times most of your monitors are set. Now the other thing that most people don't know about, and you probably won't hear about unless you go and look for it online on the Department of Environmental Quality website, where you're an inspector who had to go through the testing procedure, um, of all those monitors I showed you on that scan tool, if you have a vehicle um, built before the year 2000, 2000 on down to 1996, you can have two of those monitors not set, not completed. Those drive modes weren't completed and still passed the emissions test. Now, if you have a 2001 or newer vehicle, you're allowed to have only one monitor not set. So you say, okay, that's great, my car needs a cat. I know what I'll do. I'll, instead of buying a thousand dollar catalytic converter, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll clear the code and then I'll drive it through all the other drive modes except for the cat. Well, if your car failed for having a catalytic converter failure, it has to see that monitor set. So you need to think about what your car needs and what the, the emission test isn't stupid. It's going to figure out what your car needs also. So you can't really trick it. There's no way to trick it. Um, but uh, for the most part, that's how the procedure works. A lot of people don't understand the drive modes. Uh, what has to happen and it's different for every car that graph I showed you isn't for every car on the road there are several different ones some of them are very complicated um, most of the evaporative emission ones require a cold soak period where the car will sit at 70 degrees or lower for multiple hours at a time that's why a lot of times I say let your car set overnight after you drive it and then drive it again um, if you're not willing to pay to have a shop do the drive mode for you and like I said, oftentimes there will be parts needed to get the car through emissions, even with a technician doing the drive mode for you. Um, again, my name is Ray. I'm uh, working at Whitney Automotive in Fredericksburg. Um, we're at www.whitneyautorepair.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. If you like this on Facebook, you can follow along uh, with video uploads and, and all of this type of thing. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through Facebook. Um, again, WhitneyAutoRepair.com. Thank you.